And if we look carefully at the first three industrial revolutions, uh, Mark's given some insights there and, and he's absolutely right. Uh, but one of the things you can observe is that each one was faster than the previous one. Uh, and also in each case, uh, we saw a positive progression in policymakers' ability to manage them. Uh, I mean, the first one was dreadful, right? It produced the Victorian depression uh, I mean, the inequality was just absolutely skyrocketed and uh, that all those interactions gave us a really, really long, especially in Europe, uh, less, a little shorter in the United States. But then the second one gave us the 1930s depression, uh, which was also really long. But again, you know, we, um, policymaking was in its infancy in, this, uh, in these two environments. In fact, when you're on the gold standard, policymaking really doesn't exist per se. Uh, the third industrial revolution really sets apart. It moved faster. Uh, it took a while for the benefits to show up, right? We, we were looking for the productivity benefits all through the 1980s and they, they were everywhere except in the statistics. And then suddenly around the mid nineties, uh, you know, they started to really show up. Uh, and so, so anyway, we, we did get some big benefits and and often uh, you kind of get into this, uh, that, what, what really happened there was policies were better formulated. And in fact, and especially monetary policy was aimed at inflation targeting. Well, that allows the, a supply shock, which is what this is, what economists call it, to unfold more naturally, as opposed to what happened under the gold standard where you just got hammered by it, by the deflationary consequences of it. We do see a rising inequality each time. Uh, again, we saw it again in the, in the third industrial revolution. And as Mark says, no doubt we'll see it uh, this time around too. And Mark's ideas are ways of making sure that spreading around happens more efficiently, equitably, faster, uh, and more importantly, not taking generations. I do think the fourth industrial revolution is probably gonna unfold even faster than the first three. And certainly uh, COVID has accelerated it, look what we're doing right now. But that, that makes it even uh, more important that we make it easier for individuals to manage it. And some of those ideas are exactly right. It goes, goes back to those interdependencies that I mentioned earlier, you know, digitalization, that's great, but we need to ensure people have the ability to adapt, as you say, uh, digital fluency. Uh, as I mentioned before, the uncertainty that we face, the future will become even more uncertain and we need a better roadmap for going there and we need to choose our route. Uh, and I think we're right now we're, we're kicking around ideas. We need to choose that route. And my hope is that we can help if things like this will help focus that discussion on the practical issues so that the next step on that route is clear. And, you know, when a budget has so many initiatives in it that it's over 700 pages long, to me that demonstrates at least one thing that is a lack of focus. So let's try to do the hard work of guiding those choices now. Get childcare up and running fast, collaborate more across governments to eliminate silly rules that cost us money every day. And in your part, Sharon, help people uh, prepare for what is coming.